So we're focusing on the power accusations and uh, to help us understand the level at which we are now from where we're coming from is Judy Ogunso, our data and information analyst. Judy, we've been looking at this uh, submissions by President Muhammad Buhari and asking where is the power especially? Have you been able to find it? I don't know if um, Nyota has been able to find the power anywhere. Uh, can it be found? I don't even, I'm not too sure. And I think that's, that's really the challenge. And um, I would like us to look at three things. And those are, there are three reasons why Buari is angry. So we'll talk about that. The second thing we'll talk about uh, is the three reasons why Obasanjo is extremely upset. And finally, we'll talk about the three reasons why Nigerians are frustrated. So let's look at the three reasons. Let's start with the three reasons why Buhari is angry. The first is, in less than the next 100 hours, President Buhari will be reading his fourth Democracy Day speech, and that is officially his last. So he's done 2015, he's read 2016, he's read 2017. Now he's about to read his last. He's about to read his last at a point where there seems to be so much that hasn't been done. So clearly, he is angry. The second reason, Gimba, why he's angry, is because he had talked about this power solution before he came in. He had tweeted that the solution will be to decentralize power in very specific terms on the 22nd of January, 2015, the same year he came in. He had tweeted stable electricity. When he came in, he had talked about the national shame in his first day, in his first Democracy Day speech, saying we've got over 180 million Nigerians, yet we generate less than 4,000 megawatts. And so he had come in with a solution, with the promise of a solution. Three years after, has power significantly improved? The answer is no. And so that is the second reason why he's angry. But the third and most important reason why President Buhari is angry is because of the oil price. Now let's look at the highest oil prices among when President Obasanjo was there, President Yaradua, Goodluck Jonathan, and himself. As at July 2008, under President Yaradua, oil prices had risen to as high as $145 in Yota, the highest in the nation's history. Under President Obasanjo, the second principle that is in the face of all of this, oil prices had risen to as high as $77, August 2006. And so President Buhari is at the tail end of all of this. The highest oil price since it's coming just happened this month, $71. And so he's angry that he hasn't been able to lead this nation when oil prices were booming, were at the peak. Again, under Yaradua, it was double what it is today. So we've seen the three reasons why President Buhari is angry. Well, we can't talk about Buhari without talking about former President Obasanjo because he is also very upset. Now, there are also three reasons why President Obasanjo is very upset. The first is, Buhari talks about highest oil prices. President Obasanjo is talking about the average oil price. Now, his explanation is, rather than President Buhari focused on the highest oil price. Let's look at the average oil price when President Obasanjo was there and the other presidents. Indeed, Obasanjo's argument is that under his eight years, the average oil price was only $38. So his argument is, let's not look at the peak of oil price. Let's look at the average. $38 under the eight years of Buhari. That is a statement of fact from the International Energy Agency. Statement of fact, again, is so far under President Buhari, average oil price has been $51.
again, average oil prices were much higher, were in triple digits when President Tia Adua and President Jonathan were there. But the statement of fact is, on an average, oil prices under President Obasanjo, average oil prices was the lowest, $38. So that is the first reason why President Obasanjo is very upset. The second reason why he's very upset is that in 2002, when the economy grew the, at the fastest rate at 14.6%, average oil price was only $33. And so his argument is oil prices, yes, assist to ensure that the government has good revenue. But again, President Obasanjo, based on his arguments, is saying that it was able to grow the economy at over 14 percent, even though oil prices during that year was averaging only $33. That is the second reason why he's upset. Now, the third and final reason why President Obasanjo is upset is because of corruption. This discussion of $16 billion and no power subtly means money was stolen. But let's again look at the facts, and let's decode it carefully. Transparency International, again, that's the global watchdog that gives all countries their corruption report sheets. They say when President Obasanjo was leaving office in 2007, Nigeria's report sheet on corruption was 2.2 over 10. That was the score. Again, to make it simple, 2 over 10. Not, I don't know how lenient of a teacher you will be, but how will you score 2 over 10? Now, let's look at what Transparency International says about corruption under Buhari. They say 2.7 over 10, approximately 3 over 10. And so, indeed, President Obasanjo's report, report sheet when he left in 07, 2 over 10. Today's report sheets on corruption, 3 over 10. Is there any real difference between a student that scores 2 over 10 and another that scores 3 over 10? Does a student that scores 3 over 10 have the right to rejoice that I performed better than you, you only scored 2 over 10? Because indeed, Obasanjo's own argument as well is, oh yes, I scored 2 over 10. But in 1999, when I came in, the report sheet I saw was 1.6 over 10. But either we look at 1.6 over 10 as our corruption score in 1999, or we look at 2.2 over 10 when Obasanjo left in 07, or we look at our report sheet today of 2.7 over 10. Nyota, there's only one word to describe all of this, F9. And so Obasanjo is really upset that the administration is pointing fingers that money wasn't well spent, that money had gone into private hands. Because the evidence today also shows that there's still a lot of corruption, not only in the private sector, but in the public sector. Did, did you look at, uh, in your analysis, did you factor the, the, the empiricals? Because when we look at uh, the former president, Ulisha Gunopasanjo, and his tenure, and uh, the $16 billion that was the $16 billion that was spent under him to revamp the power sector. And we didn't have any special intervention at that time. He was the legislator, he was the president, he was just about everything. But in this new administration, we have a legislative arm of government. We have the president also. Is there a correlation, you would say, in spending patterns that will warrant a back and forth argument on who spent what. Okay, I understand that uh, you have to answer that question after this break. We have to go very quickly and we'll be back. Join us again. <laughs>